everyone I hope you're doing well today I'm going to do a voiceover because this will shorten the video like by three times it um, it was just so long and yeah about 40 45 minutes long and I just didn't want to to have such a long video <laughs> not everyone has time to um, to sit down for such an extended period of time and so I thought I will just basically do a voiceover. Today we are going to do an illustration just of the face from the moving doll stamp set and like I said many times before when I feel a little bit stuck or when I have been really busy with my work outside of the creative aspect of it then I tend to just pick up a stamp set and draw faces it makes me feel good there is something about it that's really relaxing and giving to giving character to a little face that started off as just a few lines is something that I find quite satisfying and you will see here as well that I just I'm going to use literally a couple or a few um, images so first the face outline and then as always I stamp the lips with the nose and finally the eyes so that way we just have few areas to guide us around the illustration so here you can see it's a nude ink as always I do like to use a nude ink and that way I can build on top and enjoy illustrating without it looking like it was stamped and now it's time to do a little bit of watercolor adding color and uh, I'll start with the skin tone first you will notice that traditionally I always start with a fine liner and I end up creating a little sketch on top of what I have stamped and then I start adding color. Now this time I'm doing it differently and I thought I will just try something that is not the usual and I ended up actually quite liking that style as well and I will explain why later when we get there. You may notice the lovely, super pretty palette that I'm holding in my hand. That is one made by me. It's a handmade clay palette and I make these from the air dry clay so they're super light and they are um, they're vanished obviously so they're waterproof. Sorry if the pauses will be sometimes a little bit long I don't think I have the energy today to edit the voiceover so I'm just gonna record it in one piece or at least that's the hoping I'm super tired today but I feel like I'm finishing the week on a high it's been an absolute interesting few days really really exhausting <laughs> but really interesting and today has been like the uh, cherry on the cake it was I can't go into much detail but all I will say is that things are just falling into places that's that's all I can say <laughs> so now with a fine liner and this one is the carbon fountain pen with a waterproof ink in there so it basically wouldn't move once it dries and uh, you add some watercolor on top it doesn't fade into the watercolor so that's that's a great bonus for maintaining these lines so I'm just drawing in some hair strands and I also done the eyes and I added the neck and then I think the rest I will leave as it is and just the lashes as per usual so I'm keeping the fountain pen and the lines to a minimum in this illustration and I quite like going into detail and adding these sort of one-liners into hair and yeah generally hair is fun to work on because you can just 
add different styles of hair and you can add a sort of you know volume and create cute little looks with it by the way if you start hearing some sort of humming noise from the computer that's because i still haven't been able to move to transit to my new um, upgrade <laughs> so the one that I'm working on now is the obsolete it's like 10 years or so old and I do have <laughs> the new upgrade but I just have been so incredibly busy I didn't find any time to unbox it and to just you know start using it which I can't wait because apparently it's a lot faster uh, editing movies and videos and all of that so I'm looking forward to that and I'm pretty sure it's not going to be doing any of these annoying noises so when I have a microphone on the desk uh, you will pick up that sort of uh, noise uh, of the fan I guess it's cooling it's trying to cool down the computer which is something that you would expect from an obsolete machine and uh, yeah things have progressed quite a bit and that's always a bonus because it's going to be a faster process and it's good <laughs> because it means that I will be able to accomplish a lot more these days it takes a ridiculously long time for me to save the video and there's on um, only so much of the length of the video that I can do so for example if I have I don't know half an hour 20 minute video I can only so if it's half an hour I can only do up to 24 minutes roughly and then what I tend to do is divide the half an hour into like 15 minutes do that part save that which takes forever and then go back to the other half, do the other 15 minutes, save that, and then combine the two, and then save that again, which takes all together just uh, unnecessarily long. All that time I could use to create, right? So I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm, I think I'm pretty much done with my projects before the end of the year, and before the Christmas kicks in, so I'm going to... Um, dedicate an afternoon into um, for transitioning into the new computer so let's look here at those cute little cheeks I've used core and that's a great choice to use um, for cheeks because the dispersion of core watercolors is pretty amazing it moves really well it's got a patented ingredient and so it just swooshes into the wet surface. So if you have wet watercolor, wet, wet into wet works beautifully. And if you just do it on basically white paper, just wet, that also works well. And um, yeah, so was I talking about my palettes before? I'm not sure if I finished that thought or not. <laughs> But I have created these palettes in four different styles and three different sizes. So this is the medium that you can see. And the way I've been using it is basically creating a little puddle of a uh, desired color right in the middle. And then swooshing it into one of those wells and kind of maintaining that color. And then I use the center again to mix another tone another hue and then swoosh that color into another well and it's been a lot of fun because when you're working on a small illustration like this a palette of this size fits well right onto the sketchbook and obviously it's aesthetically pleasing and we all like to have pretty things around us it's um, quite inspiring and I don't know personally I always enjoy creating art when I'm surrounded by pretty or nice looking things at my desk so that's a bonus so yeah check them out if you want they're available on alonacreates.com and I also created a couple of sets where if you get all four the smallest the mini one which you can see right there on the left 
of my water jar that comes for free so you do a great saving there if you are interested so a little bit of schminke yellow ochre into the hair I love making the hair quite yellow in the illustrations I think that goes so well in, in real life we don't want the yellow blonde no no that's a no-go but in the illustration field it is just fun it's fun to exaggerate and play with colors the palette that I am using to create this illustration is a botanical palette that I have put together myself and there is a video I believe and I can't quite remember if I actually um, created that or put together this palette in the video or whether I have shared the colors thereafter because over the years I have created so many different uh, palettes that I, I can't tell you now which one I did which way but either way I'm sharing the colors in this palette I know for sure so I'm going for the reddest red that I have and let me tell you in my palette that is the Paraline Scarlet by Daniel Smith and then I'm using a 0.8 fine liner this is the Derwent one and I was a little bit confused because when I added water it melted um, but it says it's waterproof so I'm not entirely sure maybe I just didn't maybe I applied it too thick and didn't wait enough for it to dry but yeah it um, I had to dab off the watercolor of it and then dry and go over it again so um, that's something that can happen and you can fix it easily this is a lovely pencil which I like to use for the eyes and that's the smoke blue and it's by Holbein a lovely little color it's kind of like a bluish gray which I enjoy moving on to Derwent drawing pencil I have got a uh, set of four here that I always use when I'm working on skin tones and the darkest color is the terracotta that I applied on the side um, and then we have two medium colors which is Mars Orange and Sanjuin. I like to use both of them and Light Sienna is the lightest color now here I wish I would have kept it heavier with the pencil on the left side and wouldn't go in with the pencil at least on the bottom half of the face on the right side because it ended up looking like a beard and that's not a great look for our girls so I tried to rescue it by just kind of blending a little bit of water color into it in the end I just took my eraser and just removed that part of the pencil so of course there haven't been any eyebrows uh, on the illustration and so I decided it's time to add some and the way I did this is by picking a pencil that is going to be similar in color to her hair and kind of giving her that bleached eyebrow look again to be honest with you after I finished the illustration after I finished filming I kind of didn't like it as much so I ended up taking the same eraser and removing it in the same manner and leaving hardly any lines there which um, I prefer the look of a lot more so I'm deepening the eye socket and adding and building on to the layers over the eye socket as well as underneath and to do that I'm generally quite enjoying transparent red oxide by Daniel Smith it's a beautifully granulating color it's also really warm and really intense so it's uh, one of my staple colors when I do face illustrations So here comes the eraser. That's my Derwent eraser and I realized I completely forgot to include it in my pencils gift guide 
uh, as a little stocking filler it's a fantastic gift basically it comes with an adapter for a smaller sized eraser and you can really get into quite a small area and remove unnecessary marks and that's exactly what I did there and just trying to add a little bit of watercolor to smoothen the whole thing and to finish I have decided to add some turquoise color and looking at these three different options I went for two I went for the uh, let's see malachite green and the malachite what is it or light malachite green that's it and I really like how the color sort of pops and looks so good with all these oranges and warm tones and it kind of adds a little bit of color without being overwhelming I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a fantastic evening and I will see you next time thanks for watching